Hi, everyone. Great to be with you today. Uh, my name is Robin Beck. I'm an education engineer here at HashiCorp, and I work primarily with Boundary. Um, thanks for being here today. I'm excited to get to do some hands-on stuff here uh, with you and Boundary and Vault. So um, you've probably seen the code of conduct here. We just want to kind of reiterate here that uh, we do our utmost to ensure that all conference attendees feel safe here. Uh, whether you're in person or virtual, uh, we want to make sure that the code of conduct is being followed at all times. So uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to pull us up on the website or approach any of us if you have any questions about the code of conduct. Um, with that, I want to introduce um, the TAs for today's session that are going to be helping out. Uh, Yoko, um, the Secure Education Engineering Manager, is here. Uh, Yoko's been with HashiCorp for quite a while and works on a lot of the Vault content. We also have Mark West. Mark, say hi. Hey. Mark is a customer success architect, and he's done a lot with the Boundary reference architecture, which makes it pretty simple for you to get started deploying Boundary in a multitude of environments. Uh, we also have Jeff Mitchell. Are you in the room yet, Jeff? All right, well, hopefully he will pop in. Jeff is one of our senior staff engineers on Boundary. Uh, he's written a lot of the code. He's very knowledgeable about it. And if you attended his talk earlier, then this will be a great follow-up to some of the content you've already heard from Jeff. So um, I'll have access to this, by the way, uh, if you want a copy of these slides. But essentially, I wanted to point out where you can find some of the documentation uh, that can get you started with HCP Boundary, which is what we'll be focusing on today, and some of its cool new features. Uh, but in addition to that, we also have some great additional content on learn.hashitorp.com, new tutorials that will support today's uh, content that you'll be walking through, and uh, also uh, additional vault content if you're interested in doing a little bit more of a deep dive on how to do some more brokering with vault you can check out some of these uh, great tutorials there uh, additionally there's some videos on our website you should check out if you're unfamiliar with how boundary differs from traditional access models and Armand touched on that in some of his keynote this morning uh, so a little bit about uh, secrets brokering here and in general the the concept of integrating Vault with Boundary. Um, Boundary in and of itself does have the ability to broker credentials for you. You can actually store credentials within Boundary and then request them uh, by a client. However, it's really when integrated with Vault that it begins to shine as a uh, credential management solution in terms of being able to request particular types of credentials from Vault, and then uh, Vault either brokering those credentials back to the client or um, injecting them into sessions if you're using HCP Boundary. So when using Vault, you get access to a lot of those really great features you're familiar with with Vault, like just-in-time credentials, for example. So that's what we're here to take a look at today. And a little bit about the access model that we'll be stepping through in general is that um, we're gonna integrate private Vault with HCP Boundary today. Now, the way that we accomplish this is by utilizing what's called sometimes a PKI worker in Boundary Land. And this worker needs to be deployed on the same network that Vault is running. It is what communicates with the Boundary control plane and enables the brokering of secrets, but that worker needs access to the private Vault cluster. That's how we facilitate the brokering of credentials. If uh, that worker is not deployed on the network, we can't access Vault. And so this is the model that we'll be utilizing today. You may have questions about how easy is it to integrate HCP Vault with HCP Boundary. And the answer is it's quite possible. However, we don't currently deploy workers into the same network as HCP Vault. So you'll want to use a HashiCorp virtual network, an HVN, in order to do some peering between a self-managed worker and your HCP Vault cluster. So this is entirely possible, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to demonstrate today, which is more of how can you spin this up and prove that it works on your own. So just want to make that clear. We're going to be demonstrating this particular model today, and uh, we will have some great upcoming content on doing HCP Vault peering uh, later on. All right. 
Uh, with that in mind, here's some learn resources that I would love for you to check out after this talk. The one on the far left is the one that we're going to be utilizing in today's session. So as we go through this, um, you're going to be able to follow along with this tutorial and try this live with us if you'd like. So that far left tutorial, the private vault injection one, is uh, what you can fire up in your web browser right now if you'd like to follow along. The other two tutorials that you see listed are great follow-ups for what we'll be accomplishing today. Uh, in particular, if you want to do a little bit more on SSH credentials uh, injection, which is an HCP boundary feature, uh, you should check out the second tutorial. And the third one is for those of you that want to go a little bit more into the vault aspect of this. Uh, so we have a quick start that you can utilize to get started with HCP boundary and vault again. Very similar setup, but more focused on enabling um, uh, the database secrets engine with Vault, for example. So a little bit more heavy on the Vault configuration side. Give you just another second if you're pulling up that tutorial in your browser. Was someone able to visit it? Give me a thumbs up if you got it. OK. <laughs> Great. Excellent. So. At a high level, what are we going to be accomplishing today? We're talking about self-hosted private vault. And uh, these are the, the bird's eye view of what we're going to step through in this tutorial. First, we're going to run vault locally. So this will be running on your own machine. We'll start a vault dev server. And from there, we'll go ahead and begin configuring um, that vault server with some policies that it needs to communicate with your boundary controller uh, or cluster running on HCP. We'll then need to set up an SSH target with HCP boundary. So this is the process of setting up a target um, and also configuring vault credential libraries. So those are two separate operations we'll need to do on the vault, uh, excuse me, the boundary configuration. First, we'll set up a credential library that has access to all those vault secrets that we're excited about. And then we'll configure that target within uh, HCP boundary. And for the purpose of this uh, demo, we'll be running that SSH server locally on our machine using Docker as well. So those are the things that you'll need for this um, exercise. You'll need Docker if you don't have it. You'll also need uh, to have access to HCP Boundary, of course. And then you'll need Vault and Boundary, the CLI tools installed locally. Those are all prerequisites right there at the top of the tutorial. So if you are missing any of those components, you should see quick links to go and grab them if you need it. Now, that's the administrative side, right? That's what we're trying to use um, as far as the admin workflow goes within Boundary. That's what we're trying to set up today. But what's the point? The point is to make it easy to go ahead and request those credentials um, via the Boundary CLI or desktop application and then inject those credentials into the client's session when they request access to our SSH target. That is the goal that we're trying to set up, is to make it super simple to get those credentials to the client. So by the end of this, that's the process that we've set up for our users. It's that easy to request and inject credentials. So now we can kind of pop into the lab side of this and begin getting started with this uh, configuration. So here's that tutorial that uh, we linked to a, a moment ago. Hopefully you have all that pulled up. And uh, on your own time, you'll read through this. Uh, but ideally, you'll understand the difference between credential brokering and credential injection. Right? Uh, it's a common feature or a previously released feature in Boundary to be able to broker credentials, and meaning that those credentials are sent from Boundary to the client that requests them. But they are available to the client. Uh, even when they're encrypted, they can be decrypted easily. And you can go ahead and see those credentials that have been returned to Boundary, uh, even if they're coming from Vault. A primary feature of HCP Boundary is the ability to inject credentials directly into sessions via the worker. And that means the client never receives the credentials or really never sees the credentials on their local machine. The injection is handled by the worker, and they're just logged in. So a much more secure process. So that's what we're taking a look at here today. 
And uh, the first thing we're going to do is set up a open SSH target just so we can have something to SSH into uh, once we've got the credentials all set up and handled. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is pop over into our terminal and configure an open SSH uh, Docker container and then some keys for that container. I have all the steps for this um, outlined here in the tutorial. If you're following along, essentially we just ask that you create a directory. Uh, I call it open SSH here. I put it in root, but you could put it in your home directory, wherever you have permission to create these things. And then within that directory, we need to generate a new key pair. Once that key pair has been created, we can then go ahead and execute Docker to create or set up this open SSH server container. And we are going to pass in uh, those keys that we created. You'll notice here after the dash V option, we have slash path slash two slash open SSH. That is the only thing you need to uh, amend or change in this command is the path to the open SSH directory you create earlier. Uh, because it contains the key that you generated. With that, we should be able to easily deploy this uh, open SSH server. You can see that I've gone ahead and done that already. So my open SSH server is up and running. and it's available on port 2222. Just to test and make sure it's um, up and running, you could pass the keys if you were really interested in it. And you can see that I'm logged in. So that container is up and running waiting to have those credentials brokered in the future or injected in the future uh, by boundary. Good so far? All right. Excellent, so we have our target all set up. At this point, we wanna go ahead and get Vault up and running. And so to be very clear about this setup, right? I'm going to run Vault locally on my machine, and then I'm gonna deploy a worker locally as well. You can see I have uh, the 1.11.4 version of Vault installed right here, or set up right here. And yeah. You can uh, export the Vault address and the Vault token. Uh, these are simple things that are done often in order to uh, easily deploy Vault on your local machine. Uh, you don't really need to do that in the session where Vault is going to be run as a dev server. You should really just be able to run this command right here. Oops. There we go. And uh, now that it's running, we can go ahead and begin setting up Vault and Boundary. Now, at this point, we're going to deploy a self-managed worker, which is a pretty simple process uh, that requires a, an HCP worker binary that we've released. In order to do this, we need a couple things, but the primary one is that we need to create this HCP worker.hcl file. This provides the configuration for where your HCP boundary cluster lives and then also any additional configuration you'd like to place on the worker, in particular, if you'd like to add any tags to that worker, which will be very useful later on. Tags can be used to route traffic to that particular worker. Uh, for this particular setup, we're going to have the worker running locally, and it's gonna be listening here with this listener uh, on port 9202 on your local machine. Now, I'd like you to go ahead and set up this file uh, in this way. Uh, you can copy and paste the contents um, of this file into uh, you know, using a text editor of some kind on your local machine. Uh, I'm gonna place this in that boundary directory that I set up earlier. The important thing that we need for this is the cluster ID for your HCP boundary controller. Um, 
Now, prior to this, uh, kind of a prerequisite is hopefully you've had a chance to pop into the HTTP Boundary portal and deploy Boundary. If not, you can try that right now. Uh, you should be able to log into portal.cloud.hashicorp.com, and it'll only take a minute or so to deploy your HTTP Boundary cluster. But after it's deployed, you'll have access on this overview page to your controller URL. This is uh, an important value that contains the cluster ID and is also used if you want to authenticate to Boundary on the command line. Looking at this controller URL, you can construct your cluster ID by grabbing everything prior to the .boundary.hashicorp.cloud. That's what your worker needs in order to authenticate to this cluster. So if you copy that value, that's what we need to paste into that config file that I was just showing a moment before, your hcp-worker.hcl, and you're going to place that value right here where the cluster ID is specified. To show you what that looks like, I have that set up right here with my HCP boundary cluster ID. Okay, here's where things get a little bit hairy. Um, if you had the unfortunate pleasure of attending my talk virtually earlier, we had a couple problems with the Docker image that is used in this tutorial. So uh, this will hopefully be finished or fixed sometime later today. But uh, for the purposes of today, I'm going to ask you all as a stopgap to visit another tutorial that I've created here, which is the HCP Manage Workers tutorial. Let me paste that URL yeah, make it a little bit bigger if I could here. This is the tutorial I would like you to visit. Now, this tutorial, if you're stepping through the instructions and working ahead a little bit, has you deploy a self-managed worker using Docker. It's very simple to do, just like we did with the OpenSSH target. Uh, but for some reason, I, I had trouble with the networking this morning, uh, getting it to work on my local machine and communicate with Vault properly. Not sure what the issue is there yet. It worked yesterday. However, uh, what I'm gonna have you do instead is deploy the self-managed worker locally using the worker binary directly. So we're gonna bypass Docker. You can deploy the HCP worker binary locally um, on any of your laptops or machines, depending on your operating system. And this tutorial has the steps for doing that. Essentially, you just download the binary, unzip it, and then we can use it to deploy our self-managed worker. Anyone need another second to plug that link into your browser? Okay. So what does that look like? Um, if you want a, a bigger deep dive on self-managed worker registration, this tutorial is the place to go after today's talk. Uh, if you scroll through the contents here, we have some nice steps on configuring the PKI worker. It's the same exact instructions as what we're doing here, but under the local worker tab, we have instructions for Ubuntu, Mac OS, and Windows for downloading the binary for um, the boundary worker. Now, I do need you to make a couple small changes to this, which is I'd like you to grab the latest version of the HCP worker binary. So if you copy this wget command, depending on your operating system, uh, what I need you to do in your terminal is replace 0.10.5 with 0.11. So I'm just running this command directly from my boundary directory where I've been setting up the other configs. Uh, when I run it, it's going to grab the 0.11 version uh, for my operating system. So let me be very clear. Hopefully within, uh, within this triage of operating systems, you select the correct one for your OS, copy the command for downloading that worker binary. So if you're on Windows, it's invoke web request. And then you'll replace 0.10.5 with 0.11. 
brand new and shiny for our GA release. Someone give me a thumbs up if they were able to follow along with that. Am I being too obscure? Is anyone able to grab that binary? Thank you. <laughs> Great, I see a few of you still working, so I'll give you another couple minutes to grab this. Does anyone need any more time with this command? Okay, the point of this is that you'll eventually here uh, be able to download this zip directory that contains the boundary worker binary. Uh, the command that I just showed you on the screen, uh, or depending on your OS, will also unzip the boundary worker binary to this directory. So you should have that available and ready to go. That's all we need to deploy the worker file that I just had you create. So you don't need that tutorial for anything else other than grabbing that worker binary. Now this is the part you're going to skip. You are not going to use Docker to deploy your worker binary file. So again, I apologize. Hopefully um, I'll either update this tutorial very quickly with the uh, direct local worker instructions uh, or we'll get that Docker image updated. Instead of deploying it using Docker, we're instead going to deploy it using the boundary worker binary you downloaded a moment ago. And uh, it is this command here that you would use in the Docker uh, run command. So if you are just trying to uh, copy and paste, you can still grab it out of the example that's here, except you're going to use dot slash boundary dash worker. Now, you'll also need to replace this with the path to your worker file you've just configured with your cluster ID. So in my case, that's going to be my username slash boundary and then that worker file. So I've got that command there. If you're still copying that down with uh, the path to your HCP worker uh, file, if you do deploy this, you will see it printing out the um, boundary server configuration. And ideally, if you did everything correctly, it will print here the worker auth registration request. This is all we need to register the worker with HCP. So what did we do, right? We set up a configuration for the worker locally, stating what port it was going to listen on and where it needs to talk to our HCP boundary cluster. At this point, we deployed that worker file using the uh, self-managed worker binary. And we're now going to copy the worker auth registration request and set this up within HCP boundary. Did I move too fast for anyone? Anyone need me to revisit some of that command structure? Hot audience, all right. Great. All right, well, uh, we're going to copy this worker auth registration request at this point, and we're going to head over to our admin UI for Boundary. This is pretty easy to access from your uh, cluster page here. You'll see this big blue open admin UI button. 
And if you click on that, it's going to prompt you to log in to your uh, HCP boundary cluster. So you'll enter in the credentials you use to create that cluster or spin it up, and you'll see this new section called workers. This is one of the exciting things that's available now to us. Uh, you'll see if you open this up, you should probably just have KMS workers. These are the standard workers that are running on HCP Boundary itself and um, you know, supported by, by HCP Boundary. What we're gonna do now is add our own worker to this list. So right up here in the upper right, you'll click this new button. And here's a great way to step through the process of setting up this config file. I tried to make it easy in the tutorial for you to just copy and paste this. But let's say you're setting up this config file on your own server and you want to construct all those values that we just copied and pasted, right? You have the ability to, again, enter in your cluster ID here. From here, you could enter in your public address, whatever it might be. And then path to the config file that you're going to locate and any tags that you'd like to create on that worker. Uh, inside of the config file, I had you copy and paste. We had a type of vault, for example. I click add, and now it begins setting up this config file for us. So this is a way to construct that config file so that you don't have to remember all that off the top of your head. It gives you instructions to uh, copy this, and then you have the ability to also install that boundary worker or boundary binary here. So they really try to make it pretty simple on you to get started with deploying this config file. We don't need to do any of that. <laughs> we copied the worker auth registration request after we've already deployed the worker. That's all we need to paste down here into this worker auth registration request field. So to be clear, I copied that directly out of the terminal here. And now I'm going to click register worker after pasting that request in. You'll get success, it was added. You can click done. You'll see a new PKI worker has been added to HCP. And after a moment, if I open it up, we will hopefully see our tags appear. There we go, two tags type, vault, and worker. So where did those come from? Those came from these tags listed right here. So this worker's been registered with HCP, excellent. At this point, if you're following along, we're ready to go ahead and set up things on the boundary side. Uh, to do this, we need to authenticate to our cluster on the command line. So what will you need for that? You need, firstly, your controller URL that you can copy, again, from your HCP portal. You will also need your auth method ID. If you haven't already grabbed this, inside of your boundary management UI, from the home page, you can click on auth methods. Click the boundary logo here, and then auth methods, and you can copy your password auth method ID. Those two values are needed to go ahead and log in on the command line. To do that, I'll export my boundary auth method ID. I'm using environment variables. It makes it very easy to log in using these environment variables. And additionally, I need to export the boundary underscore adder, which I'll then set equal to that address copied from the portal. Now I'm ready to log in by running the boundary authenticate password command and passing in that auth method ID. Um, I'll give you a hint, you actually, if you've set that variable, you can ignore that command or that, uh, that flag. But uh, to be explicit, we have to pass that in. And then also passing in the login name for the user that you created when you set up the HCP boundary cluster. I'll type in my password and now I'm logged in. So if you're following along here, we've gone through and uh, registered the worker using the UI instead of the CLI that you see right here. 
Both options are completely valid. And now at this point, we're ready to define the controller policy for Vault. So what does Vault need? It needs a policy that defines how it's able to interact with uh, Boundary. So Boundary needs to be able to uh, look up its token that we're going to generate for our credential stores, and it needs to be able to manage those tokens as well. So we need to write some uh, policy here for the Boundary controller, and then additionally, we need to write a little bit of additional policy here for the secret that we're going to create and manage. And we made it very easy on you to copy and paste these values. First, you'll need to authenticate to Boundary, at, or excuse me, to Vault. And to do that, you just need to export the Vault address and token that were used when you set up the Boundary Dev server. So you can copy that Vault address and paste it. We can then also copy this Boundary controller policy that we'd like to write to Vault. And I'm just going to paste that right in. Additionally, I want to write that KV policy. And now we're ready to add a secret. So this is going to be the key that we generated earlier for that open SSH target. Pretty simple, right? We're going to store that key in Vault as a KV secret. To do that, you can copy and paste this command, and I'm going to pass in a username. And then I need to pass the path to that private key that we created earlier for the open SSH key. Uh, to do this, you'll just need to replace this with the path to the open SSH key that you generated. So this at backslash here is what you would need to uh, replace. Here's an example of that. I've said private underscore key equals at and provided that path to that open SSH key I generated. Now that I've added that secret, I could go ahead and request it from Vault, and you can see it being returned there. So we have the secret in Vault. We have our Vault policies in place. And now we're ready to configure Boundary to go ahead and uh, interact with Vault. To do this, we need to create a token or request a token from Vault. And it's important that that token's orphan period of 20 minutes and also renewable. Uh, we also need to pass the policies that we just created when generating this token. Now, uh, you can go ahead and copy and paste and export the environment variables if you'd like. We have these handy commands in the tutorial that make it super easy to both create the token and store it as an environment variable for later use. So we have the demonstration of how to do that manually, but you can also just copy this export command that does that all for you in one go. So generate the token, store it as an environment variable just to make it easy. And now we're going to begin setting up boundary. We've already authenticated. And at this point, you can go through and begin uh, setting up boundary uh, with some testing resources. I accidentally left this org in place earlier. But uh, at this point, what we would do is begin setting up our credential libraries and um, stores. So this is a pretty simple exercise in copy and paste if you'd like to go about doing that. Uh, you can also use the uh, UI here to begin creating new orgs. So testing-org. Within an org, we can create a project that will house our credentials and our hosts. So I could create a new project named ssh-project. And with those in place, we're ready to go ahead and begin setting up our Vault credential store. Now, when setting up an HCP worker, like we did earlier, we created this worker filter for the credential store. And this is an important step. We need to pass this filter to the credential store when we generate it. You can notice here, we're going to create a new credential store of type vault. I pass in the vault address, the credential we created earlier, and the worker filter that we created 
uh, whenever we defined what the worker should be uh, deployed as. So copying this, I'm passing in that uh, cred store token from earlier. Oh no. Ah, and of course, I did not export the project ID because I created it in the UI. So if you are following along and doing it in the UI like I did a moment ago, you'll need to grab the project ID that you just created right here and export it as an environment variable or just pass it directly to the boundary credential stores create command. Excellent. So I've gone ahead and created that credential store. It now has an ID. And I think the tutorial has us export it as the cred store ID variable. And again, we have these handy commands that would allow you to create them all in one go if you'd like. So I'll export that as cred store ID. If you are on the uh, admin side with the uh, boundary, if you've done a lot of this already in our tutorials, there's some copying and pasting of IDs right now, right? So uh, that's what we're trying to make simple on you by having these environment variables that we export. At this point, we're ready to create a credential library within that credential store. So I'm gonna copy this nice handy uh, command that both creates the credential library and exports it as an environment variable. You can see to create this credential library, it's type of vault. We pass the credential store ID that I just created, and then I provide a path to the vault secret that we just created. So notice that's the path where we can find that uh, SSH key that we uploaded to Vault a little while ago. And we're also specifying that this is a Vault credential type of SSH private key. Excellent. So now I've created that. And uh, this command both creates and exports the, the uh, environment variable, which I can see here. Now we're finally ready to create our SSH target. Now to do this, we can need to set up a host catalog, which will contain the host, the uh, open SSH target from before. And so I'll simply create a new catalog within my project and I'll name it SSH catalog. I can do this in one fell swoop using this command. And now I've created a new host catalog. Within that host catalog, we'll go ahead and now create a new static host for our OpenSSH container. All we need to do for this is pass in the address of our host and the host catalog ID that it should belong to. Uh, because I'm running this locally as a container, it's available on my local host, so 127.0.0.1. So I will both create the host and export its ID with this single command. Excellent. And now, now that we've created a host, we need to add it to what's called a host set, which we can do with this handy command. We'll pass in the host catalog ID that we just created. And we'll finish by adding our hosts to that host set. Excellent. So now within our SSH machines, we have our host. Here is its host ID that was created a moment ago. And finally, we can create our SSH target. Now, you might not have caught this in the beginning when we deployed the OpenSSH server, but we deployed it on port 2222. And that's what we need to provide when we set up this target. Now, this target is going to select a host from a particular host set. So first, we'll create the SSH target, passing in the project ID and that default port.
And uh, I believe I need to now export it. Uh, ID. Great. And now I can finish by adding my host source to that target. Okay. Now we're all set up with the host sources. And finally, we're going to add our credential to this. So we have an SSH target within Boundary. We also have a set of credentials that are going to be injected from Vault, brokered and then injected. Uh, here we have the Boundary targets add credential sources. We provide the target that we just created, and then we provide the credentials that we would like to inject by passing in that credential library that we created earlier. You can see that after running this command, I now have injected application credential sources listed, and we're ready to grab those credentials from Vault. We've attached those credentials to this target. OK. At this point, it's as simple as running boundary connect SSH. You can see it asks if I want to connect, and we're in. And that's it. That's the entire workflow that we're trying to set up on the administration side. So now it's as simple as saying, I want to connect to that server. And those credentials are being injected by the worker after they're received from Vault. That's why the worker needs to live on the same network as the private Vault cluster. So it can grab those credentials for us, and then they are sent or injected into this session directly. Another way to do this is to use the Boundary Desktop app. Looks like I need a new version. <laughs> and with this application, you can go ahead and pass in your credentials. You can see targets, and you can request that a session be initiated. And this is the workflow you're trying to enable your clients to have. Right? It's as simple as going ahead and opening this application and then clicking on the, car the credential, uh, the, the target that you set up earlier, and requesting credentials. At this point, it passes in the proxy URL, and you can use this on the command line to immediately inject credentials, just like the boundary connect command allowed you to do a moment ago. And that's it. I think we're running up pretty close to time. So, um, all this workflow is inside of this tutorial. If I went a little fast for you here at the end, please do try this uh, for yourself later on. Uh, call us over if you have any questions. Um, at this point, we'd like to take questions. And I think we have our TAs both in the room. Is Jeff Mitchell here? Hey. All right. Well. He needs a microphone, and uh, <laughs> if anyone has questions about how this was set up, what it facilitates, uh, all the work that went into it, Jeff uh, can answer a lot of these questions along with us. Mark, please come up as well. Oh, I should mention as well, um, Mark set up this amazing Terraform config. Oh. All right, we'll send another link out. But uh, you can deploy the entire tutorial with Terraform real quickly if you want. So does anyone have any questions we can answer for you? No? You got the man of the hour here, so. All right. You guys are ready for boundary certification already? <laughs> What was confusing about this workflow? Did anyone uh, get a little lost there at the end when I went through the entire host creation process? Boundary worker installed. So I, there's nothing to say. Yeah, the, the, the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi is a little troubling. Mm. Yeah, I think that was a problem with the last session as well. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, that's 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 very good feedback, and it's unfortunate about the Wi-Fi at the moment. Um, it's taking far longer to get resources than it should. 
And you said the boundary worker binary took a while to download itself? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to echo what uh, the general manager said. Uh, but also, so I, I was trying to follow the, the instructions. The cluster ID, right? Um, looks like there's a URL, UID to pick up from. And I, there, there's nothing in the instruction that actually, actually indicates where to grab that from. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing it, but uh, I don't see it. It should be unique, right? It should not be the one that's, uh, that's in the procedures, right? Yeah, here's the instructions right beneath the file where it says uh, the cluster ID can be determined from the cluster URL, and it mentions here how to construct that from the URL. So is that the, is that the one that I should be copying, the exact same one? Yes. Oh, the exact same one, okay. No, 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 for, for your cluster. Which not, is right not, not the one here. The one for for your cluster that that's running. This okay. is just showing an yeah. So that documentation is just saying if right. that's your URL, then the the ID would be that 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 section of it. So how do I start my own? Log into HTTP portal and launch your boundary cluster. HTTP yeah. So so this is so this is predicated on having an HTTP boundary cluster right. um, set up. So and, and, and how do I log into the portal? Okay. Is that in the instruction or? Did I miss it? It's a prerequisite at the top, yes. Okay. And I'm happy to help you out with that too at the uh, Learn Lab table after this. Um, we have uh, our booth over in the hub. So if you want help setting this up, come visit us at the booth and I'll, I'll walk you through the process as well. But those are part of the prerequisites at the front of the tutorial if you try it at home. Hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I apologize. This is a little bit more advanced of a workflow as well, I should just point out. Um, we have a whole set of getting started tutorials with HCP. If this is your first exposure to this, this was probably a lot. Uh, seeing the host creation, the target creation, all that good stuff. So we do have a set of getting started tutorials that will walk you step by step through the domain model and understanding a little bit more of what you're setting up here. We really wanted to show off the credential injection and the self-managed worker portion of this because they're really exciting features that bring Boundary um, kind of to the ability that you know, people can use it within their own uh, networks. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that though. If you just want to get started with Boundary and sort of don't need the, the extra features that are part of HTTP Boundary, you can download the open source version, run Boundary Dev, and you have a very full featured uh, boundary experience that you can use with a lot of the learn guides and it, it just runs locally. So uh, that can also be used if you, you know, th this learn lab obviously was about SSH credential injection, but if you don't need that as part of just playing around with it, then you can download the open source version and use that. So in, in this case, if, if I followed it right, you're using credentials put in the KV to get injected through the, the, the SSH. Can you also use um, Vault's SSH secrets, or is that? So, um, so right now we support, uh, so wherever it's sourced from Vault, we support uh, private keys and, uh, and passwords along with usernames. Um, certificate support is coming soon. So if you're using uh, SSH certificates from Vault's SSH uh, secrets engine, then that is being worked on right now. That will come out fairly soon. So I and just some wanted... of the tutorials also set up the username password credential type. So you know you can check that out and see that type as well and how to inject it. Sorry. Also, I wanted to um, draw attention to the boundary reference architecture where yes. you can run all of this as well within um, Docker, um, Docker Terraform uh, console sync, as well as um, Kubernetes. So um, wherever you're most comfortable, um, highly recommend checking out boundary reference architecture. But I'm biased because I contributed to it. <laughs> so if you are interested, open the deployment section of this and you can see how to deploy Boundary on a multitude of architectures, uh, including Kubernetes and you know, all the favorite cloud providers. I have a question on the split. Uh, I know for with Boundary, if you're using open source, you're going to be talking to the controller uh, when your, you have your boundary agent on your, say, your laptop develop workstation and you're going to be going into the HCP. My question is, while you're facilitating and going to initially under, uh, know where the IP addresses and whatnot for your worker nodes within any given uh, cloud project or wherever the location of those agents are for boundary, is it the boundary agents that directly 
authenticate and interact with Vault because one of the things that any uh, financial company is going to be worried about using HCP is that Control Plane has any escalated access to, say, Vault for those SSH keys to be able to have specialized access to our infrastructure. Yeah, so so currently um, with with open source boundary or boundary if you're not using uh, private vault access, then it is the controller that reaches out to vault. Um, okay. There's a feature called private vault access, which allows you to use one of the, the workers that you have brought yourself to HTTP boundary and have that worker be the thing that reaches out to vault. Okay. Um, so that if, you know, if vault is behind a firewall somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, on your corporate network, you can run a worker there and you can say, mm -hmm. Hey, use that worker to, um, to reach out to it. Uh, this but that's only for HCP, correct? When using HCP that the, yeah, the that is user. correct. Okay, that's great. Correct. Because um, that's one of the delineators of what I've been finding with financial companies that they don't want to deal with HTTP at all because uh, private uh, security data is going over the internet and they don't want that. So that that opens up potentially the door to using HTTP. Right. I mean, if you're using open source, then it can you know the controller will reach out. Yes. But you're running it yourself. You can run it mm. you know in your own on premises and, and so on. Yeah. So. But there's no enterprise offering. I was just talking uh, to others downstairs. And so it's either use HTTP or the open source right now. That's correct. There's not yeah. an enterprise offering at this time. But if we do use HTTP, you have the option to have the agent instead phone into Vault instead. Correct. Yep. Wonderful. And so, and so that, just to, for 30 seconds, so just so you know, when you, when you register an agent with HTTP Boundary, it generates en shared encryption keys. So along that path, only the worker that is... Mm -hmm. The controller itself and the worker that is actually sending out the command to Vault actually gets access to the Vault information, like a token and so on. So it's encrypted within uh, within the controller's database, and then it's encrypted all the way down to that individual worker that then mm -hmm. makes the call out to Vault, and then it's encrypted on the way back. So we try to make sure that you know only the the component parts of it that actually need need to, that support to actually make that Vault call have access to it. Um, but you know it is. You should just be aware that it is originating from the controller because the configuration mm -hmm. is, you know, in the database. The controller manages that. So, yeah. you know, we encrypt things within the database that anything that's sensitive or secret gets encrypted at rest. Um, but the but, controller never actually sees those secrets that uh, no, it does. Boundaries using it, it to get back to the client. Uh, I mean, the controller in the end mm -hmm. receives that data. So, okay, you know, it would be. Encrypted by the, the by the worker to the controller, the controller mm -hmm. would then decrypt it and then store it encrypted until it's needed by by whatever worker's handling okay. the connection. Thank you. Yep. I think we're at time. Is that right? Great. So if you do have more questions, please come visit all of us at the uh, at the education booth uh, in the hub. And uh, we want to thank you so much for being here today. Mm -hmm.